Hi guys, today we're going to be taking a quick look at ASRock's new Gen 3 motherboard series. Now, in this new series we've got a range of model names which you're probably familiar with, such as Fatality, Extreme 7, Extreme 4. All of these boards are all going to have the Intel Z68 chipset, and more importantly, probably one of the biggest selling points about Gen 3, we're going to have support for PCI Express 3.0. Now, at the moment we don't actually have any graphics cards that feature PCI Express 3.0 but they are just around the corner so what ASRock are doing they're getting in there first they're the first brand to actually uh, integrate this onto their motherboards and they're preparing us for that which is great so today we're going to be taking a look at the Extreme 4 this is um, coming at a, a nice price point for, for all you guys around £140-£150 this is as I said Intel Z68 and as you can see, the PCI Express uh, memory slots and various other features have the black, which looks really good. And also, we've got, on all of these Gen 3 boards, we've got gold solid caps. So against the black, this looks absolutely fantastic. It's a really good looking board. So this is a, a video that's just going to complement the full written review, which is already on Vortex.net. I'll pop the link in the description for you. Okay then, so starting things off, we've got the box here. I know some of you like to see the unbox on these video reviews. So uh, we've got a fairly plain box. Uh, spinning it over, we've got a diagram of the actual board and a rundown of all the features, the main features there, and um, some of the technologies that are involved and the statistics as to how much of an increase you get over uh, different types of uh, technology. And open things up, we've got here the documentation. We have the quick instruction guide, although it's pretty thick. <laughs> we have the software setup guide, various bits of um, leaflets here for Lucid Virtue, XFast USB. And then onto the actual accessories kit, we've got an IDE cable there. We have the Molex 2 Serial ATA. SATA uh, 6G cables, we've got four of those, and we've got the audio cable 3.5mm. We've got USB 3 panel here for attaching to the front of your case, and that just hooks up to the USB 3 header on your motherboard. We've got the SLI bridge, which is just for the two cards, although this does do tri SLI, we've only got the two. Input output panel, and a couple more cables for. SATA 6G and the Molex to SATA. And that pretty much concludes all the accessories that you get, so we'll take a, a good close up tour now of the actual board. Okay, guys, so here it is. This is the Extreme 4 Gen 3. And just from an initial impression, you can see there that this board looks absolutely fantastic. We've got the gold solid caps, the black PCI Express, memory slots, and various other elements. They just set it off really nice. Probably one of the better looking boards that we've taken a look at at Vortez over the years. Obviously this is LGA1155 this board so it's going to take Intel's second generation Core i7, i5 and i3 and uh, Intel's Z68 so we've got the outputs on the input output panel. So around the CPU socket there we've got the 12 phase power design that's 8 plus 3 digi power and you can see there we've got also the gold solid caps and those are 100% Japanese made for added stability and durability. And over the other side we've got the 8 pin power for EATX, extra juice for your overclocks. And the heatsink design, more than adequate for cooling the MOSFETs. We've already got a CPU inside the, uh, the socket there because we've already run the review, the full review on Vortex.net, that's the Core i5-2500K, managed to get that up to 5 gigahertz on air cooling, uh, we did need to nudge up the voltage up obviously to 1.45 but that's a very good overclock and being LGA1155 it's got the same mounting holes as um, 1156 so if you've got an 1156 cooler 
you'll be able to uh, slot that onto to the socket there and uh, call your CPU. For the memory slots there, we've got dual channel DDR3 support and we can put in here 1066 megahertz all the way up to 2133. As you can see there, it's actually printed on the PCB itself. And we've got the standard 24 pin power. And then moving along, we have the serial ATA ports. The black ones are actually SATA 2. We've got four of those. And the grey ones are SATA 3. Two of those provided by Intel and two by Marvel. And then next to this, we have the onboard power switches. So we've got power and reset. Really handy if you're a system builder. If you don't build inside a case, perhaps you've got a test bed, you can get quick access to uh, to the power and reset buttons. They're really good, handy thing to have. At the bottom of the Extreme 4, we've got the USB headers. The larger one there, obviously USB 3, and uh, this gives us two ports. Next to this, we've got two uh, two headers, which are USB 2, and this gives us six ports. Over the other side there, we've got the LED debug. This is uh, obviously going to give us help when we've got problems on post. This will output a code, and we just need to look in the instructions manual, and we'll get a quick solution. It just helps to eradicate any problems and gets you to the solution as soon as possible. And then on the other side of this, we've got the Z68 chip, which is covered by this nice heatsink. Heatsink, funnily enough, doesn't actually have any fins on it. And uh, as someone pointed out on ARIA forums, it is very reminiscent of Cooler Master's V8 CPU cooler. Onto the PCI Express slots though, we've got two PCI Express 3.0s which are operating at X16. And then we've got an additional one which is only PCI Express 2.0, again that's X16. So the possibility here we could run uh, multiple GPUs, we've got Tri SLI or try crossfire and if you do run that we've got the additional molex connector there for extra juice if you're going to run multiple gpus below this we've got the x1 slots we've got two of those again pci express 2.0 and then we've got the pci slots for um, you know older devices we've got two of those just in case you do have a pci sound card or anything like that Okay, and finally onto the input-output panel on the Extreme 4. We've got the USB 2 ports, PS2 keyboard, various display ports. So we've got the VGA, DVI, HDMI, display port. And then we've got the clear CMOS button, which is extremely handy. You know, just in case you've got any problems booting up and you need to reset the, uh, the settings there in the BIOS. We've got the USB... Uh, Firewire, eSATA, Gigabit LAN, USB 3, and then we've got the audio panel there. And on that audio panel, we've actually got an optical SPDIF. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. This has obviously been a quick overview of the actual board. The full review is on Vortex.net. I've got over there the, uh, the performance benchmarks, the overclock, and the, the verdict, my own verdict. So the Extreme 4 Gen 3 is a very capable motherboard, takes on some of the big giants over there from the rivals like MSI and Asus and it has no problems as well, especially when it's overclocked um, and it overclocks very well too, 5 gigahertz, no problem, comes at a very nice price point and of course look at it, I mean it just looks absolutely fantastic, as you'll agree it'll look great in any case. So guys, that concludes things. Thanks again for watching. If you've got any comments, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. Post them in the box below. And uh, if you stay tuned, we've got some great stuff coming up soon.